Do you yeah, ever yeah. think about leaving, Bert? <sighs> What's that? Yeah. Sunday. Sunday, yeah. You got your Sunday? Yes. I honestly, I would like to be like, oh, it's such a grind. It's so hard, but it's so much fun. You want anything else? No, this is soda, Bud Light, No, I'm all set. I'm good to go. And I totally interrupt what you were saying. You got here Sunday night? Got here Sunday. And it's also like everyone goes on business trips and like, oh, Vegas, man, we're here for seven days. I love it. Do you? I think it's awesome. I used to, I'm not like, even when I was at the height of like partying and doing extracurriculars, I was still not like a Vegas club guy. I've never been like a club guy. He hadn't met gambling yet. Yes, uh, and so this past year I met gambling with Dana, and uh, I am truly addicted. Are you? I will sit at the table for hours. That's the best. Isn't I, it? I'm not a big gambler, but on our cruise, mm. I gambled a lot, and it was so much. I had so much fun. I'm the money person in our family. I don't know if you could have guessed that. Yeah. So I'm not going to be like, yeah, here's $1,000. Just throw it down the toilet. That's what I think of gambling. But uh -huh. God, it was so fun. What game? So what fun. were you playing, Blackjack? We played What's the One Craps? Crafts. Oh, yeah. that's a crafts. great social game. Yep. Played, oh, that was my favorite. Yeah. And we played roulette. And we played some other game I'd never heard of before. Do you remember what that game was, Peter? Is it Baccarat? Weird one no. That totally lost all the money at. Yes. Poor Foley, man. All right, Peter. I don't Foley. remember what it was either. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. Really, really fun. I had a blast. That's yeah, awesome. it's, it's a good time. It is a good time when you get everybody involved and you got the camaraderie around the tables and everybody's winning. You know, if you're down or you're losing, it's like... Oh, it sucks. Yeah. And as a girl, mm -hmm. uh, this really sweet guy just kind of went, let me teach you how to play this game, craps. Because Bert does not pay any attention to me. He's like, I'm in the game. You're, you know, every man for himself. And so this sweet, <laughs> sweet guy just stayed with me the whole night and taught me how to play. And it was the best. Because I don't think I would have ever figured it out if Bert was supposed to be my partner. Do you yeah, ever yeah. think about leaving Bert? <laughs> no, of course not. No, uh, no. There are have been times though. Like he had this moment after Travel Channel where he had some PTSD, where he was not normal, and I kept going. I wonder how this is damaging our kids. Like I need to really start kind of thinking about this. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I had that first time, I had that thought of I wonder how this is damaging our kids. I said, dude, I think you're like out of my pay grade. I think you need to get some help. And he did. And then he got diagnosed with PTSD and then he got treated. Was he in the so, war? Like how did he get PTSD? Yeah, from Travel Channel, from Trip Flip, because he was like jumping off bridges and repelling. No he, way. He's not like that guy. Yeah. He's not an adventurer guy. He's not an adrenaline junkie? No, he wasn't. I think he may have become one, but mm -hmm. in the beginning, the first episode of, of, of Birth Conqueror, he hid in the bathroom and called me and said, I'm hiding from production. They can't find me. Don't tell them where I am. He was just going to jump off the stratosphere in Vegas. That's what he was going to do. And he couldn't, he couldn't do it. He's throwing up in the bathtub, like totally couldn't do it. Scared to death. So if that's how you react to that, yeah. And you're doing that every day for like 10 days straight, and then you have three days off and then 10 days straight, it caused PTSD for him because PTSD is caused by like intensity without recovery. Got you. So he had no recovery mm -hmm. and it was six years long. His right? st That story is fascinating of him and all the travel channel stuff because we've only known Bert for, I don't know, what, 18 months now? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it seems like just all, when he sat down the first time on the bus and it's, you know how Bert is. Like you sit there and you ask one question and then 45 minutes later, you ask the next question. But the way he was telling the story of his life, it's like, it's incredibly interesting how it all how it all went down and the comedy thing and finding out Segura is making this much money and he's that, how he has to elevate his game. Like the, the ability to adapt, improvise and overcome. Very yeah. impressive. It is impressive. It's impressive that the two of them too have been friends for so long. I mean, really, really friends mm -hmm. and have built their businesses kind of side by side and now together. It's really cool. It's yeah. kind of like the two of you. Yeah. yeah right? I would say, who would you think you'd be more of Tom or Bert? Well, I'd, I'd probably say Tom. Yeah, I'd say so too. <laughs> you think so? Why yeah, yeah, do you yeah. say that? Why? Um, I am more, if I'm, if you're looking at just the, the energy of walking into a room, <laughs> I, I am much more of a, uh, Bull in a china shop, rolling ball of butcher knives, not necessarily uh, evaluating everybody else's feelings first, just kind of coming <laughs> with my own energy. Life of the party type of stuff. And, and Will is much more, 
much more strategic, much more understanding where, where people are. That's why Will is so great at getting along with so many different people. Bert right. actually talks about this on uh, Two Bears, where he says that uh, Tom is like cultural, like the cultural guy, black guys, <laughs> cool black guys. Like he can get along with the cool black guys. Me personally, cool, cool black guys are like, yo, what? They always hit me with, you play too much. And right? that's when I know I'm out. You say that yeah. I like him. You that's right. You know. Yeah, it doesn't, I don't do well with the black community. Yeah, I say yeah. like, no, What? Really nice. I don't, I know. I try to wear all black. I try to try to fit in. I, I got the tattoos. Know. How do you, why, why do you even think teasing. that? That's <laughs> it's just, no. I you just, sound like, but I always say about Birdie, Castle Wide Wake. Yeah, you know, exactly. Castle Wide Wake. Yeah. So you got to be in a good boat to stick with that guy. Yeah. So, you know. If you're good with it, then you're good with it. If mm -hmm. not, it's kind of hard. Right. You know, to hang out with somebody, cast a big wide wake. It's when did you know you guys were going to be good friends, or did you know? You played together, right? First, yeah, we played together in 2018. First few right. minutes. First I would say minutes? it probably took 90 seconds. And it was. When we actually um, hung out, yeah, or like mm -hmm. sat with each other. Because there was, it was a, a really cool because we played each other in college. And anytime you see a white guy with the last name Compton, you're going to remember that guy. And then we played we, again. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We played again my rookie year, your second year in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And then the couple, a few years later, you know, you see a white guy on the football field. You kind of give him a tap on the ass. You're like, hey, brother, we're doing it. Look at yeah. us, huh? We're actually, right. we're making it through it, aren't survive we? Survive in advance. Yeah, survive in advance. And uh, 2018 comes around, Will is uh, signs as a free agent to the Tennessee Titans. And there's a tweet article, something that comes out. It's like, Will Coft and Taylor Wan are going to be best friends. So I feel like my marriage is being arranged. I'm kind of like excited, like ready to meet my bride. <laughs> and uh, Will comes in and we end up having like these like uh, breakfast clubs where like before practice in the morning, like that is the worst time of the day. The anxiety is the highest. You're putting down food. You know, you're about to have a two hour practice. It's going to be hell. And we would sit there and just talk about podcasts, talk about, you know, these different things. And when I become a friend with somebody, it is very much we are going to be the best friends ever or you'll never hear from me. And he loves hard and he loves fast. Uh, yes, I do. Not at all intense, right? No, 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 no. Same like, way you got married. Not was, quick, exactly. fast, hard, intense. I was yeah. sitting with another uh, free agent. We had just got there. Mike Campanero, shout out the boy. And we would just kind of, you know, obviously we'd be sticking with each other like in the mornings and Taylor came and sat down by us one morning. He's like, yeah, see so you guys having a good little time over here. What am I missing? What am I missing yeah, out well, on? Hey, I want to laugh too. Yeah. And then yeah. from that day, we kind of had our little breakfast club. And then I was just in a hotel right down the road from the facility because I had just gotten there. And Taylor, you know, like every day, he'd be like, yo, come over. Burgers. Let's, let's, the boys, let's go get some burgers. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Like, you got to come. You got to come over. You got to meet Taylor. You got to beat the bean. Bean's my oldest daughter. Yeah. That's or awesome. Or like me, like uh, me and the, uh, my, and Campanero, like we'd be in the hotel and, you know, we're just both at the hotel. Like he'd be in my room and Taylor had to go to this one, this formal, this formal thing you had. And he's like driving home. So he FaceTimes me. I answer and Mike and I are like sitting there. He's like, oh, are you guys hanging out without me? And <laughs> just a, just a, he's an intense lover. He's an intense lover. Yeah. I understand. Bert, yeah. first date with me, I couldn't get rid of him. He called me every single day <laughs> at nine in the morning. What are you doing tonight? What are you doing tonight? every day for like, I think maybe months. And mm. I was like, dude, you're intense, but I for sure know like you like me. Yeah. yeah. Like there's no doubt. The persistence. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just like, just super, this is what I want. Mm. Yeah. Sounds like you're that way too. Yeah. I mean, when it came to me courting my wife, we got, we, I got engaged <laughs> with her in, um, Five weeks and we got married in two months. That's amazing. And I remember 10 days into meeting her, I, I we were at this, uh, we were in San Francisco at this wine bar type thing. I don't even drink wine, but I was trying to be cool. And I looked her in the eyes and I gave this big speech and I was like, I love you. I actually, I love you. I love and her she, so much. It, she looks me in the eyes and she goes, thank you. But I mean, it's been 10 days and overly persistent over and over and over again. Like after that, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And then she came back to Arizona uh, we drove down to Arizona and she left and came back and I had a ring waiting. Oh my but, and gosh. she like literally, I think until we like a few weeks, few months after we were married, she still wasn't sure of like if this was going to work out or not. I Even was just, after you were married? I was just super oh persistent, God. super, super persistent about like, this is 100% it. And it's just going to happen. Now it's been like eight years. It'll be eight years in April. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. So it's all time. what's your favorite part of her? What do you like about her most? Um, Talon is such an amazing person with... Uh, she does a great job of humbling me, which I hate, but she humbles me when I do get a little too high. But um, besides the beauty, besides all the cliche, shallow things you can say about, oh, a beautiful woman like Taylor, her emotional uh, maturity is incredible. Like her ability, I'm very much like this, as we've already established early in this show, but her ability to kind of stay consistent, stay the course, 
and open up doors of different views for me when I'm going through a situation is above anybody else I've ever met in my entire life to where like, if I have an issue, whether I, you know, figure it out, figure it out begrudgingly because she's now telling me again and I'm like, I can figure this out for myself. One way or another, I'm going to see it a certain way, how she casts the light on it, how she casts the net. And it's like, it's very, uh, it's super special because it's That's like so without cool. her, I, I, I joke because be I would, I would be dead. My, uh, my first, I always like joke, like I signed a contract, my second contract, my first contract was all me. Cause I didn't know Taylor. My second contract was my wife. Cause the day I met her is when my football career like shot into a new atmosphere. And it really, I remember going to OTAs, which is organized team activities. that's done in, you know, April, May, June. And uh, that that was the time between that off season, they were talking about replacing me and drafting somebody new and all that. And I went into OTAs and multiple coaches, multiple players were like, yo, what's different about you right now? And it was like such an obvious difference because I was with her and it was like such a grounding experience. So, I, so I loved it. it yeah, and all, all, the, all the boys that were around him at that time too, like Delaney being one of them. Yeah, like, yeah, Taylor kind of just disappeared. Yeah. Like ninja yeah, smoke yeah. out of there. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he was out all the time. He was right. out every night. Right. Yeah. And then you were in every night. I was like yeah. the butler from Mr. Deeds. I was very, very sneaky. Oh my God. I got in and out of there. Because <laughs> it really, I was like out there partying all the time in Nashville, boozing, getting after. I was in those streets. I was a street rat. Right. I was out there trying to get mine. <laughs> and uh, literally, the, as soon as I met her, I was like no longer really drinking, no really partying. I was just solely focused on like establishing that relationship, finding out who I was, and then taking my career to the next level. That is so cool. Yeah. I love that story. Yeah. That's Uniquely, awesome. two years later, Will Compton came into my life and it got even better. <laughs> even yeah. better, very right? Similar yes. Very similar situation. Very, very similar love yeah. story. I'm For married him. to two different people. Right? I'm married to Taylor and I'm also married to Will. Right. And then we all three get together and we, we Taylor and I like to... Yeah, the really two of you get together. Yeah, and yeah, how yeah, we can yeah, handle yeah. Taylor. <laughs> like we both enjoy like, okay, we kind of get to do our venting at Taylor like with each other and there's yeah. nothing he can do because it's two yeah, on one. There's That's been, so great. There's <laughs> been multiple situations where we'll be sitting in, in my, <laughs> my man cave in my room. I have this big couch and I sit in the middle of the couch and there's two chairs and uh, Will and Taylor will be sitting there and they'll just have conversations about me. And I'm sitting right there. Right in front of you. To the point where oh it's like, God. I'm essentially getting, uh, being a fly on the wall of how to fix me. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of awesome. nothing. Hey guys, I'm getting, I'm right here and it is getting a little, it's getting a little deeper than I anticipated. <laughs> yeah, I gotta I walk out right to guys, grab a water, yeah. and they don't break stride at and all. they're still talking about you when you come back. <laughs> yeah, You got it is. figured out yet? Can you yeah. take a yes. shortcut on it? Yeah. So I'm gonna ask you these same questions too, but what what is your least favorite thing about her? Wife of the Party is sponsored by EarthBreeze. Some New Year's resolutions are destined to fail. Like the time I swore I was not going to eat any more sugar and epic fail like day one. Lucky for you, I have an easy resolution that we can all make and it will make your life easier, be kinder to our planet and transform the way you do laundry in 2024. Switching to EarthBreeze. Now, I love EarthBreeze because I always feel so bad to buy laundry detergent in those big plastic tubs. Well, EarthBreeze comes in a sheet that's in a little cardboard sleeve. It takes up no room. So even the pods that are in my big plastic tub and the plastic tub itself takes up so much room and it's not very attractive on my counter. This little cardboard sleeve I just tuck in the drawer. I pull out one sheet, put it in my front-loading washer, works like a charm. Switching to Earth Breeze won't only make your laundry day easier for you, but also makes it easier on the planet. No more plastic jugs. Earth Breeze has planted over 150,000 trees and they've cleaned over 12,000 pounds of plastic, which is amazing. They've also donated 100 million loads of laundry and counting to those in need. Right now, my listeners can get started with Earth Breeze and save 40%. Go to earthbreeze.com slash wife. That's earthbreeze.com slash wife for 40% off your subscription. Wife of the Party is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know me. I'm a huge proponent of therapy. I love therapy. I don't know what life would be like without it. It's helped me in so many ways, make good decisions, make sense of bad decisions, help me be a better mom, better wife, better friend, better person. I love therapy because it's a set time every week where I can self-reflect and improve myself in some way or another. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. 
Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash wife today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash wife. What is your least favorite thing about her? Is there something that just um, drives you nuts? Because I know what it is about me for Bert. I think, you know, Taylor is... This <laughs> 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 is going to see it too. <clears throat> as much as Taylor is so great with her emotional maturity and yeah. the communication, yeah. <laughs> there are so many times where I find myself now being 30, 32 years old where I am, Will and I are traveling all over the place and there's, you know, we're trying to build busting with the boys and you go and you sit all day with people and it's like, hey, I got one thing for you. I got something for you. And it's like, kind of gets like, hey, can we fucking, what is the issue? And like, let's figure out the solution right here. Like, how can I spend as little time as possible <laughs> finding the solution? And then Taylin is a is a, a person who, great communicator, loves to talk through fucking everything. Can I curse? Right. I, I don't know if I can curse. It's that. fine, yeah. Yeah, loves to talk through everything. So a lot of times I'm thinking to myself, brother, like, let's just <laughs> figure out the solution right now. Right. And I feel like I could have, we could have been over this and on to the next subject or something three hours later. So do you mean like, she likes to talk about it because she needs to talk about it or she likes to, she has to talk about it to find a solution because, you know, women sometimes right. just need to talk about mm -hmm. it, right? Are you, a, are you a fan of Jordan Peterson at all? Uh, no, very little, just right. a little bit. So Canadian guy, yeah. really well-spoken. Um, people, some people love him, people, some people hate him, but he has this, this, he talks about relationships and how important communication is in relationships and men, uh, naturally go to what's the, what's the yeah, problem? Okay, let's go find the solution. Yeah. As opposed to women who essentially, if you're uh, looking at this path and there's so many, let's say 20 stones, every single stone has to be unturned before mm -hmm. you can see the end result. As He's opposed not the to, first person who came up with that. Right. Exactly. He was yeah. just the last YouTube short video exactly, I watched right? of motivation. That was also, in a, yeah, on the that way was here. also in a very shitty book called men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. Yes. Same exact yeah. concept. Women have to talk about shit. Right. Men just want to solve it. Yes. So is that what you mean? Is that's that what yeah, you to talk about? That's stuff? pretty much, that's pretty much what I mean. I'm sure if I really got in a deep dive, I'd find a whole bunch more things I would pick at, but I would say right now that is probably that's my, it. my biggest thing is like, sometimes I just want to get to the solution, mm -hmm. but I know we're, we're better off long-term. Here I go, backtracking, yeah. as if she's watching this right now. I I'm kind of scared, like, <laughs> no, I know this is actually the best thing for us, but actually, you know, sometimes it's a little frustrating, you know? You got to listen. You yeah. got to give her a little bit of what she needs, right? Yeah, yeah, but I no hear question. you. That's, that's, if that's, that's your funny. biggest complaint, I think mm. you're doing okay. She's like, what do you what do you hate about it? And you're like, you know, it's honestly the best thing for us. <laughs> My hate it's is, the best thing for she me. She loves man. too hard. That's yeah. her problem. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. loves too hard. Yeah. Well, it's it sounds to me like she cares a lot. Yeah. So then she's got to turn over all those stones to make sure she makes the right decision because she cares so much. Yeah, that's good. That's a good way of putting so, it. A very good way of putting it. If you want to spin it to the positive, that's yeah, yeah. what it sounds like. That's good. Yeah. How about you? What do you love about your wife? Uh, the first word that comes to mind is she's adventurous. She's mm -hmm. somebody who sees life, not like different than me, but I would say I'm very much like more ambitious and she helps me kind of like reel that in because she's like, you know, she's like the first, she's like the first woman who got me to go on a vacation longer than a few days. Like Taylor, like Taylor and I, he'll tell you like when you're in that, uh, like football world and you just want to, you're always chasing to get 1% better. So if you, you feel like if you spend too long, you know, not focusing on your craft, like wanting to go to Mexico or do a little getaway or go travel and have a little vacation or a staycation. And you can't be on top of every little thing. It like gives you anxiety. Mm. Um, and she's brought a lot of that stuff out of me. She's just, uh, she's an incredible partner. She, we're kind of like a yin and yang mm. because there's, we, we move a little differently and we see things differently, but I feel like, uh, she challenges me a lot and brings a lot of good out of myself and helps me wrap my mind you know, around different things like myself, like it wasn't the the five week, 10 day stuff. Like she had to kind of go through, you know, I had to put her through a combine and we had to go through a lot of different things to make sure there was the right fit. Um, a combine? But, uh, what no, are you I'm just talking teasing. about? I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> I had to put her through the ringer. You're the ringer. Uh, but we did, you know, we did a uh, couples therapy before marriage counseling, mar uh, marital counseling therapy and stuff. And I don't know, getting to learn about your partner in that light 
it just helps you see things, especially when you're doing all the communicating mm. on like how you see something. It's like, yeah, why don't we just hire somebody for this versus doing this? And she's she sees so it. Smart. She sees it. Di- she sees it differently. Like I want a partnership. I want a partner. I don't want to fall into like any of the gender roles, not any of them, but I don't want it to get too off base from everything. So she keeps me, uh, she keeps me on my toes all the time. So keeps I was, you that's honest, what, right? she's very progressive. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, yeah. cool. That's cool. That you went to therapy before. Yeah. Yeah. I had a, I had this group chat, shout out the island. And I had a buddy of mine who had gotten married recently, strongly recommended it. And we kind of, you know, outside of us just BSing all the time and doing group chat stuff. There'd be a, a, a good thing that kind of comes to the group chat every now and then that guy, like we all kind of talk about as men. And he's like, Hey, I really strongly recommend this. So we kind of looked into it and I was like, yo, what do you think about this? She was all about it. She's like, you know, you know, they're almost surprised that you're coming up with an idea like that. But so we kind of went down that path and that was, it was very helpful. That's good. It's good when you want it to work, right? When that's mm-hmm. what you, you you really want it to work. Right. You know, right. so if you want it to work, you'll do whatever to enrich yeah. your relationship, your experience or your, your life. Yes. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So what do you not like about her? You What's know, there are a couple of things that <laughs> come to mind. Charo, Take off the governor, Will. Yeah, so <laughs> Charles is emotional. She's a crier. Yeah. And I'm not. <laughs> so like I That's and I so don't say it in such Will. a negative I way. Thought if, you if, were if, such a crier. No, just kidding. Uh, no, I can cry, trust me. You get a couple things going, the boys I'll, I'll get the tears going. But as far as just like, you know, if you're in some any confrontational conversation, like, you know, I feel this way. Like, I guess I view myself this way, which who knows if it's true, whatever, if I over-exaggerate about it, but I like to just kind of just be like a steady piece. Like if something happens, it's all about how you react and respond to this situation. Like, Hey, don't ever get too high. Don't ever get too low. Like kind of just stay in the middle. Like shit's going to happen. Like, how? okay, this has happened. How do we just accept it? And then start to figure out like a solution. Whereas I feel like you should be a little bit more up and down about it and a little more, you know, you know, emotional. I'm trying to find that. Do you yeah, feel yeah, it now, right? You feel, yeah. Yeah, you feel that part where you're like, I am saying a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but she, she, would, she would laugh about yeah. this because, well, you know, the benefits of like the therapy and everything else is you learn how to kind of like, I guess, talk to each other or at each other when things are happening mm-hmm. or trigger buttons or like this is happening. You can kind of make it lighter because mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure the boys would back me up. It's just like, hey, this is not as big of a deal as it seems like it is right now. Right. So that's probably what I hate most about her. Will is not a person that does morning processes. <laughs> like if there's a, if something bad happens, let's say we have a podcast and it, it falls through. Will is the first person to go, damn, that sucks. All right, what are we doing next? <laughs> like there's not going to be like a, hey, that would have been awesome. Let's talk about how great that would have been. Right. But like, is that kind of what you're uh, yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, life happens for, you know, That's such a good quality though. There's a, that's a great quality to be able to just kind of, it's resilience. You just kind of move on, Mm -hmm. move to the next thing. Yeah. yeah. You sound very respectful. Both of you sound very respectful of the fact that your wife has a different way of processing stuff than you do. That's really great. Yeah, because you know, I know really if she great. was sitting here, she'd have a couple things that she'd love to oh, no well, heck yeah. just get off that's her That's the thing about and, marriage. I think the marriage is, is two people who are different. You right. know, if you were exactly the same, how boring would that be? Mm. If you process the whole world exactly the same, no one would ever That's learn or true, grow. Yeah. You would just be bored. I would mm. be bored out of my mind if I didn't have somebody that challenged me right. yeah. in right. some capacity. You don't want it to be too challenging, but it's supposed to be a little bit. Mm-hmm. What's your What's your least favorite thing about Bert? He's a slob. Oh yeah, yeah. we did a matter of fact for our vlog. We did Freaking a little tour easy. Of, of Bert's. This is clean. Oh, this is his room. I, I mean, she, she's a, she doesn't wear all the flat bill hats. This is- <laughs> she doesn't wear size whatever shoe that is where the sock and the rag just sitting there in the middle of the floor. The yeah. rag? Yeah. yeah, I know. I was like, this oh, is-, is that a happy rag? I think, think that's Bert's uh, cum rag and sock. I don't know which one he used because there's only one sock. <laughs> a little bit of both. A little yeah, bit of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends. Yeah, he's a slob. And he's a slob to the point where if I go, hey, dude, can you just like pay attention to that because it negatively affects me? He'll say, you know, you're trying to change who I am. Like you're changing. Oh, he, my yeah, just, hey, that is a guy. Reason. That's a guy move. And, you know, it's, change, yeah. it's a big like. You mic you love drop. Me for who I am. Like, right. how, how you say that? I go, no, actually, I just don't want to fall over your shoes. Right. Just kick them to the side, mm-hmm. at least. Just don't leave them in the middle. Okay, Bert. Can't the theme it. today of the subject is selflessness. 
Let's yeah. think about others, like as you move throughout the world, like there are other people who live here. Yeah, have you not spent any time with this guy? Yeah, That's Bert, not come how up, his brain works. Come have a sit, brother. Yeah. We want to talk to you about something. His selflessness is in other places. Mm. It's not in that place, yeah. for sure. That's one thing. And another thing that I don't like about Bert is that if we are arguing, he can't see anything other than his own point of view until like the next day. Mm. So if we're in an argument, I have to, and I know that he's too much in his feelings and he's like an 11. This is really a three. I just got to sit there and let the 11 just go through all the motions. And then I'll go, okay, okay, I'll talk to you in the morning. And in the morning, he'll wake up at a three and go, you know, I think this is really a three. And mm. I'm like, good job. But he does a good job of coming back with the three. He comes back always. Yeah. He's is he somebody always. who wants to talk about it? And you're kind of just like, ah, space, do your thing. Like in the moment? Does he yeah. want to talk about it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does he want to talk about it? It's fucking exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> Where I'm like, dude, I'm that a little be... more dude in that way than he mm. is in that I also go, well, let's find a solution. Or, you know, if she hurt your feelings, let's think about, did she really mean to? Like, what's the intention versus the impact? Mm. What was her intention? Amen. Speak to him. Right? Speak, sister. The impact is undeniable. Your feelings are hurt. But is she really that bad of a person? You right. know, is uh, whoever we're talking about, or me, am mm -hmm. I really that bad of a person? I would never mean to hurt your feelings, but I did. So, but no, no, no. I am inherently evil in that I hurt his feelings. And the next day he'll go, oh, okay, you're you're not evil. You just hurt my feelings. And I'm like, thank you. Can we just get to that a little faster? Mm. Yeah. You know, but. That's a great example. I'm thinking of how I left out the the peanut butter and jelly and the sandwich bread and stuff when I put Rue down for a nap and I was kind of excited to go take a nap for myself. You know, I love my naps. <laughs> love the naps. But I kind of just forgot to put everything away and I get a text talking about, I felt like you 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 not doing that made it think like, it's my job to do it, yada, yada. And I'm just thinking, hey, sweetheart, you don't like, we don't have to do all this. Like, do you honestly think that I intentionally right. thought I'm not going to clean this up and this is Charles' job to clean up my mess when I clean up? Sweetheart, I've gotten better. I was probably 70%. Now I see myself a little bit more in 90% of the cleanup messes. Like I've made progress. Let's stop acting like I've made zero growth. Mm. That's what affects me. That's Those are my triggers. When you try to make me feel like I haven't grown that much, I just start venting. <laughs> I got just one start. too. I got one too. You brought up you brought up arguments, man. I, the another thing about Taylin is her recall and her memory of going back to conversations. We have a, If we have a, a conversation, she says something that upsets me. And I go from my three, now it's a four, now it's a seven, now it's a 10. And I'm thinking that comment wasn't just a comment. That was an attack on my entire character mm -hmm. of a human being. <laughs> right. I now go to her with fire, with you said this and that. And for whatever reason, I've manipulated that in my head. But the recall and the ability to be like, actually, I didn't say this. I said it like that. And the tone I was using is this. And the, the ability to verbatim say what she said and what I said back mm -hmm. months ago, days ago, really pisses me off. So my so wife she has that ability. My wife's memory really bugs me. Or uh -huh. you don't remember. Do yeah. you think, hey, what happened to my charger? Are you J is JP around? No, oh, no, but the, say, the charger thing is a bit. The charger yeah, yeah. thing. And she's like, you know, my history says I probably did something with this charger, but in my brain, I'm like, I swear I didn't mess with your charger. Mm -hmm. But you kind of have nowhere to go because the credibility here is like, okay, this, and then I'm thinking maybe I did do something with the charger because I can't remember. Right. It's like and you then, and, then she, and then she found where she misplaced it. And uh -huh. I was like, that is one on the scoreboard for your boy. Uh -huh. Just FYI. That's JP that was there to witness one. That's what I you have do to that guess. to Bert. Yeah. Bert loses everything. And we had one set of keys from for for my car was missing forever. Like months, <laughs> like four or five months. And mm. I finally went, fuck it. I got to go buy another set of keys because he's going to lose the only other set of keys I have. And then I'll have no keys to my, and it's my car. So I go and buy another like keys, like 800 bucks. And then I find the key in my coat pocket. Oh, oh tough ah, shot. Yeah. Did you let him know? Yes. I oh, had to that's go something back you got to keep go, to yourself. Oh, oh, yeah. That's something you got to keep to yourself. Sorry, babe. But, oh, yeah. but your history says yeah. you freaking lose your head if yeah. it's not tied no to doubt. you. So no it wasn't doubt. like it was out of nowhere that I was going fucking Bert lost my damn key. Mm. It's, it's just my affecting key. your whole day. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I hear you. It's hard. Is it hard to apologize? It is In the moment, myself. yes. Yeah. It in is? The, in the moment, it's always difficult to apologize. I like to consider myself a good job of tucking my tail between my legs and coming and be like, hey, that was way out of line. 
But once I figure out that I was wrong, mm-hmm. it's like I over, I try to overcorrect in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. I suck at it. I, I, I could just I with could, Bert. I can yeah. apologize to anybody else, but with Bert, I have a hard time, and I don't know why. Because that's my one place I should be really wanting him to feel like, "Hey, I'm really sorry." But sometimes I think my little, uh, my little, um, my piggy bank in my brain yeah, of the all scoreboard. the shit that pissed me off that yeah. I, he hasn't yeah. apologized to me for. Now, right. finally, when I need to apologize to him, I'm like. Nope. Not the time. I'm going to sit on it for just I could be better at apologizing I could be as better well. At it too. I definitely could. It's hard. Yeah, you don't do a good job of that. <laughs> you told me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> How did kids change you guys? How did kids oh, change? Oh my you? goodness. It's the, I think for the best. It's the worst, man. It is not. That is not true. Man, kids suck, dude. It's terrible. They take all your time. No, I'm kidding. Having kids is literally it's one of those things where all the bullshit cliches of like, you don't know until you have them. Hey, you'll know once they come out. And you're, everyone's telling you this fantasy story about like, when you have kids someday, you'll understand. You're like, I got a dog mm-hmm. or I got a, I got a goldfish. Like, I take care of that. I love that. Yeah. Why can't it be the same thing? Mm-hmm. And then once you do have the kid, it is literally like, oh my God. And as I get older, like I, my oldest is six, is six years old. I'm being able to experience true conversation, like working through things. And kind of being like conscious to the point where like, if there's an issue that comes up, it's like, what an opportunity to set a brick of foundation right here. Mm. And you're kind of like putting that in there and you're like, you know, maybe I am the dad of the year. I really don't know. <laughs> but that really put a good case out there for yeah. me. It's all, it's unbelievable. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And being a girl dad too. Like I was disappointed when I saw the pink. You were? Uh, yeah, absolutely. He was. I'm the, th- I'm the third. And so I wanted, I, I, I want like a William the fourth. Aww. But dude, Rue, like- we are obsessed with her. It's 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 so much fun. She's right. she's gonna be two in April, so she's in when she kind of that sixteen month mark mm-hmm. when they start kind of acquiring their personality and everything mm-hmm. else. Like she's a little spark plug. But you're and not done. No no no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to. Yeah, we're trying to. Have yeah, more. you have more. more. Yeah, you have, more. you have two. I have two. Yeah, we have three is being talked about, and uh, soon I will be having sex. So <laughs> nice. it's gonna be really exciting. Very nice. I'm oh, really, yeah. yeah, I'm getting kind of hyped up for it. It's gonna be a drop nice a deal. comment. Congratulations. Yeah, for sex. congrats on sex for me. And I will say out loud, if I have a girl again, I'll be devastated. Really? Not because I love my two girls. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm an individual that needs to experience everything in life. Right. It's the reason why I took a lot of different drugs. Not because I wanted to, because I wanted to. It was a necessity. I wanted to try out the experience and done dumb things because I thought the experience. Right. And if I have a girl, again, it's no longer like, I'm not going to have any more than three kids. Three is going to be maxed out for me. It'll be more the morning process of knowing I'll never be able to experience having a boy. That'll be the hardest part for me. Mm -hmm. So I am dead set on having a boy. <laughs> and it's going to hurt worse when I eventually, Taylor will get pregnant and I'll have twin girls. Right. And then Will will have a boy and I'll resent Will for the rest of the time. <laughs> I'll, I'll get him back some way. Well, from, uh, we were really disappointed when we found out Georgia was a boy because I did not think, first of all, I never thought I'd be a mother. But second of all, I didn't think I would know how to mother a girl mm-hmm. at all. Um, and Bert wanted a boy. Bert was, I, I'm sure you know this, Bert like played every sport. Growing up, a uh, huge athlete. He's still yeah, super yeah, yeah. athletic. I mean, not a professional athlete. He still wants but to. But a pretty he, good he fucking athlete. And I want, I want to put a bookmark in that. You finished this story, but we need to talk about Bert's real athleticism in a second. Okay, but, go, but yeah. Um, but I'll tell you now, having a 19 and a 17-year-old girl, for Bert, personally, a boy would have fucked up our whole family because he would have brought out with them and separated. Mm. Uh, I don't think he was as evolved in the beginning as he is now as a human being when we first had kids. And I think he would have just taken the boy in the corner and been like, you girls can fuck off. We run this house. So I think he actually needed to have two girls Mm -hmm. for him to have his own like human growth and development be as good as it could be. Mm -hmm. Um, So I love when Bert hangs out with guys, with like guy guys like you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, I love it. But I was like, I don't know if I could live with that every day because he and the two girls would run over my rules and boundaries all the time as it was. So I felt like if it was literally a team against me, the house would have been chaos. Bert was not about bedtime, not about boundaries, not about you got to eat your vegetables. (laughs) He was not about it. You know, there was one person kept everybody like you're talking about when you give a little brick, a little foundation of this is going to build life. Bert took like my lead on that. 
And I think if he had had a boy to go out and throw baseball with and just ignore that mm -hmm. part of what I was saying, he would have. Right. So I was really glad. So if you have all girls, maybe. Not saying you'd be that way, but maybe that's uh, just what you needed. You brought up a good point about like uh, not being evolved as enough as a human being. So we had, I was like, I think 25, 25 when uh, Wynn was born. And from my maturity standpoint, I think it's much more beneficial that I got a girl. Mm. It taught like the patience. Uh, mm. It gave me much more empathy right. mm. than I think it would have been if I had a boy first. Right. Because I think, you know, boys... You know, whether, you know, people are always arguing, you got to treat them the same. I think they're boys and little boys and little girls are different. They are. And they're, you're in a rough house a little yes. more. And when, uh, especially when my my youngest is more of like a war daddy, she's like, she'll be running down the, the hallway and she'll hit her face. She'll be like, I'm good. And just kind of keep it running. When is very much like a, a six-year-old little girl, princesses, unicorns, loves mm -hmm. all that stuff and very emotional. And she's taught me like so much empathy in that way that I don't think I would have been able to really have if I had a boy first and then a girl second. You're right. right. Yeah. It you're brings out right. a love. It brings out like a softness. Just it does. like a, as dudes, like as men, you're kind of like thinking you got it. You get a boy. Like we've been, we were boys. So we think we just know like, Hey, I know you feel this way, mom, but I'm telling you, this will be what's best for them. Cause ultimately you want them to be better than you, mm -hmm. but then you get the opposite and you get a little girl and you kind of just don't know at right. all. Right. And then it's like, instead of like, oh, get up. You're all right. You're kind of like, man, you just never want your little girl to like, oh, hey, hey, listen, I don't want to keep this from you. Like, hey, go ask your mom. And like, you know, dad will look it up or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, but yeah. you just never want to be on your daughter's bad side. Um, That's but a good I do. point, I think it's though. Because like I don't know what it's like to be a boy. Mm -hmm. And right. you don't know what it's like to be a girl. And I feel like with all of it, too, it's always like daddy's girls and mm -hmm. mama's boys. Mm -hmm. Like, I just feel like that opposite kind of like attracts because if you have, like, I'm sure with you having daughters, like, even though you thought you'd be better suited or maybe wanted a boy, it's like you want your daughters to be better than you. So you're going to be a little harder than maybe the opposite is where it's like, you know, as a dad, you're, you want to be a little softer. But, oh, mom, kind of like. Take yeah. it easy. It's our little girl. And right, yeah. in their mind, they're like, we, she needs to be better than me type of thing. It's yeah. funny because everything you said I agree with, but that's not how I act at all with my girls. What do you mean? I'm I'm probably I'm probably a little harder on them when it comes to when it comes to stuff, especially from the toughness category. Really? Like I really like it's very hard for me when Win uh gets hurt and I'm thinking to myself, like when Willow gets hurt, I'm like, holy shit, she's hurt. Cause she she's like kind of came out of the womb like Tough as nails. Ready to go. When Win like stubs her toe and there's a loud scream, you know, she stubs her toe, I tell her, hey, there's two kinds of people. Like people who overreact on a stub toe and people who don't. <laughs> who are you going to be? Yeah, yeah, who are you going to yeah, be? Yeah. actually learned from Taylor. That's a Taylor, uh, a yeah. Taylor Gallagher original quote. <laughs> but I, I, when it comes to like the toughness category, I have a hard time with that. But I think I'd be even more harsh with a boy because you were like playing sports growing up and they'd be like, you'd be driving home and your dad would make some comment about little Billy is kind of a pussy and you're like, yeah, he kind of is a pussy. And I think to myself, if I had a son, would I want, you know, a dad and his son talking trash about my kid being yeah, a pussy? I don't, kind yeah. of, I don't want that. The competitive. Yeah, so uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but I'm harder on my daughters. No, I feel you. I can't wait till Rue's old enough to where I can spank, give her spankings. You just spank? Hit her. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that's it's, it's like, like, for me, like if Rue falls or like hurts herself or something, I've, I've done well enough and train myself to just not have a reaction. Yeah. Where Charles might go, oh, and I, I just, I, I look at Charles, I'm just like, dude, like, just don't react. Like, let's just see what happens. Right. Because if she's going to look at us and think like, oh, should I be hurt or whatever? I try and stay as even keel as possible about it. Um, Cause I feel you. It's like, you don't, it's like, okay, how hurt are you? Like, right. Let's think about this. Right. I like to implement little words too. Like anytime my kids get hurt, I'm like, oh man, you got smoked right there. And sometimes they get hurt. They're like, daddy, I got smoked. No. Like, I got smoked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm just yeah. like, dude, hey. Hey, like, you're going to be all right. How are you going to handle adversity right now, yeah. sweetie? So I have a question, but uh, let's answer your question first. Oh, yes. About Bert's athleticism. So athletic ability. And I know mm -hmm. I've seen, obviously, Bert's been doing the podcast game for a long time. He's had a lot of viral clips. But a lot of times I see Bert talking about how athletic he is and how strong he is. He starts taking TRT and now he's a man's man of all men. Well, he, he challenges us to the combine, that's too. Where I was, that's where <laughs> I was going to go. Okay, okay. So a month ago, uh, we are in a group chat with uh, Tom and Bert. And it's presented to us, uh, would Bert do better or worse against Will Compton in a combine? And the clear-cut answer, no question about it, is Will would mop the floor, take Bert on an absolute dog walk <laughs> well, during yeah. that combine. There's no question. Oh, uh, yeah. But he's super confident about it. So I obviously the first thing our minds go to is like, what great content this is going to be. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. 
And we start getting closer and closer. Weeks are, you know, we're two weeks away. Now we're one week away. Yeah. And it's like, hey, you guys want to do this combine or not? You want to do this combine or not? And me and Tom are essentially like fight promoters in this group <laughs> chat trying to say our boys are going to win what? And Will's talking a little bit, but Bert's kind of gone radio silent on it. Has where he? he has not responded at all. And it's finally time to answer the bell. And he didn't step up to the challenge. It, now it's just a skills challenge on Friday. It's not like uh, yeah. not doing some full blown combine. Right. Because I basically told him like, man, you better figure out how to get me on bench and that's probably all you will get on That's there, and if anything. The only thing he could possibly get you on his bench and that's right. because he's just bigger than you. He's a burly guy. He's strong. I see him yeah. lifting his weights. He's lifting his weights. Yeah. He's keto now. Right. Right. But you get him in the pro agility, the three cone, the 60 yard shuttle. You're pretty good at the agility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but we don't need that. to remember, remember my man's 51. We don't need mm -hmm. to like blow out a knee oh, his, to prove any point. His soft we don't want to do that. I but know, if that's where I know, he wants to go, he he's got to learn the hard right. way. Because yeah. no, yeah. no hard way. Because then I have to take care of him. I don't no want to question. take care of him. No yeah. way. I'll tell you right now. We were uh, we were at media days yesterday, and I have been out of the NFL for one calendar year, and I stood on that turf for two hours, and my knee hurts today. <laughs> so oh I God. can't imagine. Being 51 years old. Well, he probably has a lot less wear and tear than you do. I don't well, know. You talked about all this stuff, pretty... jumping out of buildings and doing all that. Well, that, yeah, but... I saw him even doing that. Uh, he was playing football. Oh, yeah, for... For yeah, content for, um, or whatever he was doing. It was for a show called Hurt Burt. He <laughs> yeah, played Hurt football the the show's for called Hurt the Burt. LA, and they wound his clock, man. It was bad. We had just started dating, mm -hmm. and we thought he broke his ribs. It was bad. They lit him up. Man, the, really the ribs, bad. there's like, uh, I never broken ribs. I think I've broken one rib before, but I had, a, I had cartilage damage one time, like a rib out. And the sleeping, yeah, just breathing Very in general, I know, it's I broke so my miserable. Once too. The sneeze, it's awful. the sneeze, yes, a it's cough, a laugh, mm. it's 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 terrible. So when you quit playing football, mm -hmm. what was that like? Did you have some mourning? Did you have some loss, some grief, or were you like, I'm good? Like I know the circumstances of you no longer playing, but mm. what was it like for you emotionally? What'd you go through? Wife of the party is sponsored by Every Plate. You know I'm a big fan of meal subscription services. Every plate is amazing. It's so inexpensive with high quality, really yummy, delicious recipes. It makes making meals so easy and fun. My daughter loves to pull a package of every plate out and follow the directions and cook herself dinner, cook me dinner. It's been a real add to our uh, to our our routine every week. A dollar means something again. Got a buck? Get $1 steak for life. Simply add a 10-ounce ranch steak to your weekly order for just $1 per box while your subscription is active. Now that's raising the steaks for dinner. Looking to budget your food expenses in February? Save big and eat great with America's best value meal kit. Their meals are cheaper than your average fast casual meal, so ditch the takeout to save money while still enjoying fresh, satisfying meals. They're the easiest way to eat affordably. You can count on every plate to make mealtimes easier without compromising on quality. Every plate recipes include only the highest quality ingredients, including sustainably sourced seafood that meets the Monterey Bay Aquarium seafood rankings, so you know your meals will be fresh and flavorful. Get a meal starting at just $1.49 plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code 49WIFE. Subscription must be active to qualify and redeem the $1 steak. Get started with Every Plate starting at just $1.49 per meal plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code 49WIFE. Subscription must be active to qualify and redeem the dollar steak. But what mm -hmm. was it like for you emotionally? What'd you go through? Uh, you want to hit that first one? Me hit first. I think we we have a couple different experiences. Um, like we started busting with the boys, and Taylor had just signed the deal that he that he signed, which was shout out the boy record deal in the NFL for O Lyman at the time. And Thank you, Will. for myself, it was like I didn't start. I was a backup and a special teamer that year with the Titans, and my line of thinking was. My resume is what it is. Like if I get signed, it's going to be a coach that knows me. They already know what I can do. Like there's no, I'm not going to raise my ceiling. Like, and I'm over the being on a 90 man roster and making a 53. So at the end of the day, I'll wait and play the game and just gamble a little bit on if somebody will bring me in before the season, which that worked out for those two, three years, for those next two, three years. So I got to kind of balance both worlds 
Because Taylor, he'll, he'll tell you, like, every year I dabble with, I think I'm done. I'm pretty sure I'm done. I, you know, I think I, you just get the itch. You go back and forth. But I kind of, uh, I would say a soft landing for the position I feel like I was in as, like, a journeyman because we had the transition of busting with the boys. And I would spend weeks, like, in the season, like, I got injured with the Saints. So I was chilling on the couch for several weeks before I went to Oakland. So you kind of taste what those weekends are, like, kind of hoping it turns, like, I've been in that in that gray area, mm -hmm. and I was in it enough. And then once I got used to it, and busting was popping off, and then it was kind of like a cool thing. And it's like, oh, football would be fun to do it. It truly became like the second priority versus my identity, which it was for so long. Mm -hmm. That I feel like when I was done, because again, we chased that year ten thing more for fun. But it was like I was already prepared when that time was over with. Right. So I feel like we had, you know, we had very different experiences. I know mm -hmm. Taylor will go in a second, but. Mine was such like a, it was a, it was a weird process, but a great one just because it's like every player worries about what am I going to do next? I, I and, can imagine. And I remember that year with, uh, with Tennessee when people were talking to me about the pod and we got the pod going and everything else. But I remember that year when I was like journaling about it, writing stuff down or like what it could look like or what it could be. Like I had the anxiety of like, man, I, I do need to figure out what I'm interested in because if I'm not wanting to buy into the 90 man roster stuff, like who knows how long I'll actually last with that kind of mentality right. to begin with. Right. So it's like, I got to start figuring it out. So that anxiety was there. But fortunately those next three years, like really, really worked out for the best. That's great. Yeah. So you had just a, sounds like a pretty natural yeah, Somewhat it was just easy. Yeah, it was as natural. Right. Yeah, it was as natural as it could be uh, for just the position I was in. Right. Um, so I was, you know, I was very thankful. I'm so thankful that we have bus with the boys because, again, guys struggle. And I, you understand why it's like you identify with something for, you know, since you've been playing flag football. Mm -hmm. Like you identify, I want to be an NFL player. I want to be an NFL player. I want, then you finally become one. And you're like, oh, this is it. And you think it's going to last forever. And it, it doesn't, man. It's quick. Right. And fortunately, we got to play longer than the average career, but it's just your identity. Right. And then you're kind of, when it does happen, you think you're ready for it. And then, you know, a lot of guys, it's just, it gets pulled out from under you or you get told no, usually without even knowing. Like mm -hmm. you just don't get a call anymore for most guys. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's That's always like, so a, hard. it's always like a, uh, like a tough reality and super thankful that the boy and I was able to kick off bus and kind of build it while we were while we were still playing. That's mm -hmm. really good. Yeah, for uh, this is, really goes back to like the, kind of the original part of our conversation where Will is such a he's very strategic and very big planner. Like I've always been a plan A is the only plan, and there's no other. There's not going to be a plan B, and mm -hmm. it happened for me like when I started playing football. When I got my first scholarship offer, I was like, okay, yeah, right, I'm going to go to the NFL and I'm going to crush it, and it's it's what it's going to be. And so I with my career was going so incredibly well. I was so proud of everything that was happening. And then in uh, 2020, I tore my ACL and it's the first injury I ever really had. The first surgery I had to get done in my entire life. And the, that year was just so incredibly miserable. The depression, the anxiety, the nervousness of, am I going to be able to be the same player, letting myself down, letting my family down, like kind of becoming like uh, feeling human because because when you're able to have success and not have injury and play at a super high level, you there is truly a piece of you that feels invincible. Mm -hmm. And so to deal with all that in 2020 and then the turbulent rocky year that uh, 2021 began with and then ended up finishing stronger, for me it was it was constantly getting beat down to where I was like, I, you know, I don't know how long I want to do this if I can't play at a high level. And I kept having a bunch of issues with my knee and to where 2022 hit and the second game of the year, first play, it hyperextends. And it uh -huh. turns, out that, turns out that my knee was uh, like the, the, I don't know, it was like tunnels or something like that. I'm not really, I don't know a whole lot about surgery, but my knee could have been done better than it actually was. There wasn't an ACL present, right? Well, no, the, the ACL was incompetent. That's, that's what right. I, that's what I was, that's what I was told. So I played all of the 2021 season on, on a bad knee to where now I, I've now like, could I go and put shoulder pads on and do a pass set? The answer is yes. But would I be able to do it at a level in which I'm used to doing it, in which the, you know, the NFL is used to seeing me do it. There's not a chance. Mm. And, and I've always been like, um, really proud of, of, of my talent. And so when I, when I came to the realization that like, you're not going to be able to be this person that you wanted to be, you're probably not going to be able to play in the NFL anymore. It was, 
weirdly enough, through all that adversity, such an easy transition. Was it really? Because I got to look up and it goes back to like the relationships you were able to gain with people, the people you were able to meet and just look into. Like there's a lot of obviously like strategy that goes into busting or your life, your planning, all that stuff. But there's a level of luck that happens to you that I just happen to feel like I'm one of the luckiest guys in the world because as soon as football no longer became an option to me, I got to look up and be a part of a business and immerse myself as a, as a, you know, an owner in a business that is already doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. And now I get to go with my best friend and travel and still live and fulfill that ego side of me where it's like, okay, I can kind of still be in front of a camera. I can still talk to these people and have some sort of camaraderie, whether it's talking to comedians or talking to singers or talking to other football players, other people do sports where you're getting that fulfillment. And so I kind of blinked this year in the fall and there was like two or three times where I was like, damn, it'd be sick to be a part of like this drive or this game. And that would have been like a really great feeling for that moment. But there was, for every one moment that was, there was 20 days that went by where I was so happy I, I you know, didn't mm-hmm. have to play football. Right. And I was able, it was more like a, a gratitude towards like, okay, I'm, I feel fulfilled in that category. And although it didn't end the way I wanted it to go, because everybody, as a kid, you're when you're, like uh, hypothetically writing your story, you're thinking of wearing a gold jacket someday, being a hall of famer. And when that was so clearly not going to happen or not an option anymore to have Boston was like the saving grace. And then we'll, we'll brought it up perfectly. Like men in sports struggle so much and you see it all the time mm-hmm. with people going downhill. And I don't know if it's the, uh, the, the headshots or whatever with people. But I think a lot of it has to do with like becoming stagnant and not having motivation to go do other things. And you kind of allow yourself to kind of become mush a little bit. And this Mm. is such a cool avenue to go down to where you're still working hard, but it's a completely different avenue of like creatively figuring things out and how are we going to get the audience to be, you know, get behind us in this situation and go meet these people and strategically go about Super Bowl. So is it's been, it's been awesome. It is awesome. What you guys have created is really amazing. It's a, it's a community, like a huge community of boys. Yeah, awesome boys, with the boys. Yeah. Yeah. We're about I 98% boys. Yeah. yeah, I'm 77% boys. Are I you really? That's pretty impressive, right? That's awesome. Yeah, it's a great that number too, 77. I know, right? Yeah, Not respect a bad the one. Respect them. I know. I, boys are the best. And so how'd you come up with Buzzing with the Boys as mm. a name, right? And what it, what is that? What is it? This is a cheesy question but I was told to ask it by Mm. someone I might be married to. Okay. Um, (gasps) What does it mean to you, the boys? Like, what does that mean? That is actually a good question. It is, but it's a little cheesy for me. I think if Bert asked it, it would be, but it was like, ask him this, ask him this. The way that the the name came about was obviously we found found the bus and we were working with this other production team to kind of like, like, hey, we're going to start down this path and all, all this. And we had this title, Will had this title, and it was called The Den. And the idea behind it wasn't necessarily like fun, loose, all that. It was actually more of a, correct me if I'm wrong, like a serious, like um, motivation type of podcast to like get, like kind of focus on like the mental aspect of all of those things. Yeah, conversations like storytelling, journey stuff, and like mm-hmm. adversity and things like that, like probably through the our personalities and everything else. Yeah. But you're not thinking this. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like this exciting being for the boys, like doing all the the culture type type of stuff that we do. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the for the boys mantra kind of came about in the 2018, 2018 season. 2018 Titans, yeah. Well, yeah, with whereas like kind of became this like call recall thing in the locker room. Like you walk in the locker room, it's like the boys, and then like five or six dudes go the boy, and you know it's kind of like we became a team that was like, hey, we're for the boys. We're all we're all working for each other, all having a good time. Like, if it's not for the boys, it's not for us type of mentality. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of, you, you've you said this a few times where it kind of felt like, are we stealing from our boys by like kind of using the phrase for the boys and making it more yeah. of like a bro-y type thing. Right. And we found the bus and uh, Will was the first one at the meeting because Will's always on time. And <laughs> I get, and Will sees a picture of the bus and he's like, I don't know if, Ooh, this is a good idea, but Taylor's going to love it. Yeah. And sure enough, I come in there bumbling, and stumbling. And I'm like, this thing is awesome. Right. We're going to, well, if we don't, you know, use it for the studio, I'm at least going to just buy it myself and put it in my backyard. It's like, like two <laughs> grand. It's like, yeah, the biggest steal of like, all let time. let me put 10 grand into it. If we don't like it, it doesn't work, I'll just put it in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right. Deal yeah. of a century there. Yeah. yeah. And, and, so, like, and he's like, and the boys will turn it around in like, like 10 to 12 days. He's like, bro, we got to get podcasting if you're about to hit OTAs. Mm-hmm. But yeah. 
That happened quick. And we ran through like a bunch of different names. At first it was The Den. And then it was uh, Two Boys, One Pod. And then someone said Bustin' with the Boys. I think at first we were like, that shit's kind of lame. Yeah. Well, the first person we talked to was Taylin. And, yeah. And, you know, Taylin's like, oh, yeah, I've thought of something, oh, you know. Well, what she said. She probably said something like, you guys could do better than that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so like, yeah. Maybe like, we can oh, yeah, do maybe better. Maybe that's a suck. stupid name. There was like this boutique little agency out of Chicago that was just like, what about Bustin' with the Boys? And we was kind of like, yeah, what about Bustin' with the Boys? Yeah. Then we kind of just did it. Because it yeah, was like, we got to make some decisions. It got to the point where it's like, I think the bus was ready and we had to start doing the podcast. We're like, <laughs> okay, bus with the boys in this. That's yeah, just what yeah. it's going to be. And if you guys don't like it, send us a better name. It's yeah. a great name. Yeah. Right? Bus with the boys. Yeah. I, I like the question. Like, what does it mean to be for the boys? I'm like trying to think through it. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like if I just pull from, from football, like the way it is in football is like football is the most, the, the best team game in the world. Like, you can't just rely on one guy. You need everybody around you. You have to communicate. You have to trust the man next to you. You have to embrace the next man uh, to you. You have to, if you're in a backup role, you need to be there for the guy in front of you if they have any questions. Like, you just have to be for the boys. And when Taylor was talking about, like, how the whole, for the boys, like, the boy, the call, recall, it's like, that would come about in training camp. You're embracing the suck with each other. It's like, Shit's going to be tough all the time. And how are you in the cold tubs, the hot tubs and everything else? And just keeping the mood and enthusiasm up, Mm -hmm. knowing like, yeah, shit sucks right now. Mm -hmm. But hey, we got the boys. Got the boys. Yeah, let's go. Hey, off day's coming. The boys, what are we going to do? We got to get Chinese food. We got to get this. Get get chill on this diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, Get banged up, watch a movie. It's just about the boys. Like every chance you have to be for that guy next to you, that guy with you. It's just about championing each other. Yeah. Because that is football. Like, that is football. And I that think, is, yeah. I, I would, just to add to that, I think, like, for the boys, like, is sim- simply put as support. Like, mm-hmm. when you walk into the world of media and cameras and you're with people that have a strong enough voice where people are going to tune in and pay attention, so many people want to have a gotcha moment, like mm-hmm. a clickbait type of, oh, hey, hey, he said this. You put this in there and we're going to, we're going to, it might not be the best look for this individual, but it, we're going to get views from that. Mm. Right. And kind of like the core value, one of the core values of busting with the boys is like, when you say for the boys, it's like, if we did an interview with Bert and Bert said something so off the wall, that was so wrong and it would be so great for our views. But Bert called us and he's like, can you please cut that out? It is without a doubt, right. uh, like not a question. It's out of there. We don't even have to think about it. Totally. And so giving somebody the availability to come on our show, big name, small name, everything in between, and have the comfort to be like, these guys got my back because they're for the boys. Mm-hmm. That is like a, a super special thing that I think is part of like the secret sauce of us with the boys. Is like, we're not out to get you. We're, ha- we're here to help people like see your personality and see like how awesome you are and kind of like Embracing, make you seem a little yeah. human. Like have people embrace you because so many people that come on our show, like, Bert's a very unique, I know we keep bringing him up obvious, for obvious reasons. Like Bert's a very unique individual in the standpoint like you see his personality, you love his personality, you have it. But with football players, a guy like Derrick Henry, for instance, very stoic face, mm-hmm. runs very hard. You don't know a whole lot about Derrick Henry. And when you go and you watch an interview with Derrick Henry, it's like very political answer. He's wi- almost whispering and it sounds like the same garbage bullshit that every single football player puts out there. Right. But when he sits on bus with the boys, there's a light and there's a twinkle and the ability to say, have a little more fun with this and speak more freely, knowing that I can kind of say what I want right now. Yeah. And if I need to, I'll call Taylor or Will and they'll take it out. And then people get to see a new light, a new lens of Derrick Henry, who you would never see anywhere else, any type of situation that, because he has the freedom of knowing that we're for the boys. Right. So if we can get that transcript, <laughs> that'll be the definition. The whole thing, both of those whole things. Thing. I need that written That'll down. be the definition. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. I, I think that. is cool about it is I feel like I'm listening to two rascals. No. <laughs> rascals is like an old lady term, maybe. Yeah. But rascal is such a great word because there's no ill intention in a rascal. Right. They're just someone that's just like into whatever they're into and super excited about it. Yeah. And it might not be like uh, the best thing for everybody, but mm. it's the best thing for them. And right. it's cool and it's fun and you can't wait to hang out with a rascal. And they're probably going to get into some trouble, mm. but it's not going to be like super big trouble, just enough trouble that it's really fun. Kind of like the Beer Olympics. Yeah. It's a <laughs> yes, bunch yeah. of fucking rascals Rask- doing bunch rascal, of rascal shit. Around. I love the Beer Olympics and I didn't get to go, but I was like, that is the best idea 
forever. And I want to go and watch all these people act a fool. Now you oh, can. Right? If you want to come next year, it'll be June 26th. Okay. Got that dialed in. But yeah, how much it's... fun was that? How much fun was it? Did you have so much fun? Dude, it is. It was way better than we ever expected it Wasn't could Wasn't it? I it bet was, it had to be. It was such a blast. And there's so much room for improvement. <laughs> it was <laughs> such a shit show. But it's also, it's also like, that's. That's part of it, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's like, it was a couple of years ago because I know Taylor said the O line did it the year before that. But fortunately, the boys were like, you know, Bustin was going. And uh, Taylor's like, hey, Corey, so a couple of the guys are asking, you want to do it? And I'm just thinking, like, okay, day drinking ball. Taylor's like, oh, I got all this Bud Light coming. He had like this pyramid built up. Mm -hmm. And we had a great time with the O line Beer Olympics. And then the next, we kind of vlogged it. Like, we had mm -hmm. our JP come over, he vlogged it, and it got a lot of good, like, feedback, engagement, traction. And we were like, you know, it, we didn't really get a whole lot of negativity from it. Yeah. And so the next year, Taylor had all these grand ideas. We really dialed in on uh, Bert and Shane. And Shane. And Shane. I think Tom as well, but Tom couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And Tom couldn't do it. And we were also told Tom would hate it if he did do it. So. Uh, and the comedian's yeah. like, he's going this year. He doesn't have a choice, but he's, he's going to be yeah. this year. I'm glad he's going. Sometimes yeah. he needs a little nudge to have a good time. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you need to just like right. push him into like, it. Tom, figure Shane it out. and yeah, Bert, you it, just dude. have You're to successful. say. successful. Like, yeah. Get in there. Have some fun. Yeah. He, needs, he just bit. needs a little. I would love to pull wrestle Tom and just hold him under the water until he gets a little nervous. Yeah. You oh know? my God. That's the right thing to say. That's why he doesn't want to Now he's not going to come for yeah, no, he doesn't Don't do that. Go. Edit that out. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Edit that part out. But, yeah, but it looked like, so, I mean, dude, what I saw online, better. like all your vlogs and all that looked so much fun, like so much fun. And then everything Bert came and told me about, I was like, this is like, it's just the best time. Yeah, Rascals is like the f most fun way of putting it too. You're like it is like the old boys will be rascals. boys and they're yeah. going to have fun. Exactly. Like, hey, what do you do? They're just having a good time. Yeah. Someone's getting mad about the noise. It's like, come on, guys are yeah. guys. Nobody got there, hurt. Yeah. You're just drinking a bunch of beer and playing stupid yeah. games. It was close. Wake up though. a little sore. Yeah. Yeah, woke up a little sore. Shane got pink belly. Like he just got, he's got <laughs> welts all over his <laughs> yeah, body the yeah. whole time. It is, it is so much fun. And, and this year, like, uh, it has been a bit of a baby for me because, like, in college, we would do a thing called the case race. It would be like the, after the first scrimmage of spring practice, uh, you know, as many guys in the teams that want to participate of two, it'd be you and a buddy in a 24 pack of beer mm. and you would just drink it as fast as you can. Oh my and God. that was always like a good time that we'd all go out after. And it was never, it was never good, but it was fun. Yeah. And then uh, the Beer Olympics was always a thing that was sweet ever since obviously Beer Fest came out yeah. in the 2000s. It was always like, man, that'd be so sick to do. And and the the, the ability to kind of do it one year, kind of give it a test run, not a whole lot of negativity behind it. And then the next year, like being able to scale it the way we did was like, it was awesome. And having the schedules worked out, because that to me was like the most stressful shit in the world. It was right. like, get in. Calling Pete, getting like everybody. Got big fast, late. Got big fast, late. And I'm like, it's in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. And so I think this year, we actually had a meeting about it yesterday. Did you? Yeah, we had a meeting about it yesterday. We have a date set now. That's awesome. And it's like, it's going to be, we're going to put it on steroids this year. It's yeah. going to be all time. That's so great. Yeah. And you're coming, yeah? Yeah. Well, I will if I can. But I also, I also want Bert to like bra out and yeah. not worry about me. You know, so I don't want him to have to, I don't need taking care of. Yeah. And he doesn't really take care of me. But sometimes in certain he contexts, knows that. he's like, yeah. uh, and so I don't want to I don't want to intrude. But he knows, I, I, he if knows I could be like a fly family, on the like, wall yeah. and and just watch the whole thing, I'd be so excited. He like knows if there's a the balcony family. I can sit on and just watch the whole thing. Yeah. You got, It'd you be got, amazing. You got us out to the uh, the the machine. I know. Like, Wasn't part, that you're awesome? part of the squad. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. he should, yeah. And remember that the next day, Bert sends like a very nice like two minute voice message just talking about how great it was. Yeah. He had no idea awesome. you guys were coming. He was so blown away. That was a very cool experience. That I think that was just awesome to fly in, do all that. So we do really appreciate that. I think that was, oh, yeah, that was you it don't was appreciate awesome. it as much as he did. It, it meant was, a lot to him that you came. It mm -hmm. really genuinely did. He had no idea you were coming. He how really how was that process for you guys filming all that, being a part of it? Obviously you're in it too. So the movie yeah. or the premiere? Because the, the premiere was about as much as the movie. It was a lot. Yeah. Um, the movie, it was really cool. When Bert first told that story, actually on a radio show called Love Line, long time ago, it was Dr. Drew and uh, Adam Carolla had syndicated 
late night radio show called Loveline where people would call in and ask questions about sex and Dr. Drew would answer them. Mm -hmm. And it was really funny. So Bert guest DJ, he took over for Adam Carolla and told that story to Drew online and so, I mean on the radio and someone called in and said, have him back tomorrow night to tell that story again. So they did. And when I heard it, I, Isla was little. I was maybe, Isla was maybe one. So it was probably 16 years ago. I heard it on the radio with Drew. Bert had never really told me the whole story. And when he got home, I said, that's your movie. That's your movie right there. That's mm -hmm. a movie. And we just, and then he told it on Rogan and then it became what it became. And then we just never, he just never really did anything with it. And then uh, I think he ran into Kale, who's the producer of the movie and told him that story. And he was like, that's a movie. Mm -hmm. And then they figured out how to kind of make it what it was. Because mm -hmm. obviously- he didn't have kids, teenagers, when he first told the story on Drew's and, you know, how they kind of crafted the story as it's happening in the past and also now it was really cool. I got to be involved in some of it. Um, I got to help with casting and I got to help, like, rewrite a lot of the drafts of the script. Mm -hmm. But once they went to Serbia, Bert and the director and Kale, the producer, just, like, ran with it. And I think they did an amazing job. Mm -hmm. Bert was a great actor. We had He'd never acted in anything before. So he had me come out for the first two weeks. I didn't know this, but he was like, okay, <laughs> if Leanne says I'm doing good, I'm just going to relax and, like, not worry about it. Yeah. I didn't know that. Luckily, he was doing really good because mm -hmm. I am so painfully honest that if he'd sucked, I probably would have fucked up the whole movie. Yeah, I would yeah. have been like, oh, buddy, no good. But God, he was great. Like, first day, I was like, you are fucking amazing. You're amazing. So he and his cousin, who was working as his assistant at the time, this was before Peter, um, his cousin wanted to be a writer. So he and his cousin and the director would, like, rewrite night before every scene that was being shot the next day. Mm -hmm. So even though they started with a script, he was writing at night and then performing all day and then writing at night and performing all day. I don't know how he did it. So that was crazy. That was the longest he'd ever been away from our family. He was gone for four months. Um, I went to see him only for the first two weeks and that's it because our kids were younger. And then, you know, they edited it. They were super excited about it and it was supposed to release right when Putin attacked Ukraine. And they were like, and pause. Yeah. We're going to sit on this for a minute. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, that's it. They're never going to release it. Yeah. It's just going to die. And we were really bummed because he he had worked so hard on it. I worked a lot in post. I sat with him and the editor yeah. and, and helped a lot with the post. And I was bummed because I was so excited about what we created. And uh, then when they were like, okay, I think it's going to be May 25th. We were like, that's, that's the anniversary of our first date. Oh, that? no way. Yeah. Our first date ever was May 25th. And we we're like, that's a good omen. That so is. good. Let's go. Let's mm -hmm. do it. And then we were really involved. Victoria also really involved in developing that premiere um, because, you know, it needed to be Bert worthy, it needed yeah. to be something larger than life. And Sony just killed it. They let us do whatever we wanted. It was so fun. Um, it was a huge celebration, I think, of that process of starting telling that story on Dr. Drew 16 years earlier to that moment was really surreal. Mm -hmm. It was it was a blur. I don't even really remember the premiere. I don't really remember it. It was just like a blur of people yeah. from our past, of personal right. friends, of guys like you. He didn't know Tom was coming. You know, it was crazy. Crazy experience. It was awesome. It, it, it was, was a, awesome. It was, it was a, a lot cool, of fun. It was very cool. And I knew at that premiere that Bert was going to suck in beer Olympics. <laughs> I knew right there. They were showing the some, cup. they were showing some clips and Bert was trying to do flip cup. And I thought we got him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. We've got him right here, man. Yeah. He's dead in the water. How did he do in beer Olympics? I don't remember. Uh, he was a great sport. Good energy guy. He was good. Yeah, sport. Good sport. Yeah. 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 Good and that's sport. where it ended. When we started releasing, when we started the snow releasing, cone post game. Yeah. 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 Got himself a nice pop. Yeah. Like Capri Sun, yeah. bag of orange slices. Yeah. And we, we said, hey, had fun, buddy. Yeah. Next so, time we'll get you in there a little bit more. Yeah. 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 Game was um, a little close. But yeah, he, it, he came, <laughs> they showed up, him and Shane showed up about, I don't know, 45 minutes late. That yeah. sounds yeah. right. Yeah. 45 minutes late. We popped off right when we got there. It was very cool because that was a lot of guys that were. There were like kind of friends and, you know, players that, you know, these smaller name players than Titans, stuff like that. And so 
when Bert and Shane showed up, they were it was a lot of people were starstruck yeah. and That's awesome. had a lot of fun with it, man. Shane's huge now. I mean, Shane is blown. What up. has happened to him in the last year is insane. Yeah, and what a cool full circle moment for him too, yes. hosting SNL February twenty fourth. No Can doubt. you believe that? No doubt. That I think that's unreal. awesome. I think we're going. Bert, yeah, I think Bert and I are going to go. That's you guys should. awesome. Yeah, absolutely. You, should. you should see if Bert can get in a couple of skits. Skits, <laughs> skits, sketches. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be awesome. And Although, I think. I think that's such a cool, like, uh, a unique FU for Shane to be able to go to SNL, fired from SNL, and now he's ho- a host because he's it's one of the biggest comedians the in the world. The perfect Thanos moment. You, you yeah. can live with your own failure. Yeah. And now look at you. Well, you, you know what he's me. proven yeah. to himself is that he can persevere over anything. Mm-hmm. If he can come back from being mm-hmm. canceled like that, yes. it doesn't matter what happens for him. He's got a career for the rest of his life, not only because he's super crazy talented. Yeah. But he has that kind of work ethic and resilience to just go, nope, I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. I mean, someone who got kicked off for those reasons, you know, somebody not quite as strong probably would have just stopped, like fallen a, apart. He didn't yeah. do that. Yeah. He's really impressive. I just saw a lot of his new hour and it's so good. God, it's just, so funny. I want to see it because those, uh, I remember like sending you, sending Will the hour in Austin. Mm-hmm. on YouTube and we thought it was amazing and then when the new one was coming out we were like could not wait I know to watch the whole thing and it did not disappoint it was so we saw him live uh, it was him and uh, Rogan had the 10 minute set it was in it was here in Vegas mm, okay. and we're sitting there and he's kind of going through the material before the special came out and we there was laughter and there was a lot of realizations where Will and I would look at each other and be like yo He's fucking funny. Yeah, man. He is so funny. And Shane's obviously a natural funny human being, but yeah. it was very cool to see. Yeah, it is cool to see. I'm happy for him. He'll mm-hmm. be, he'll be, you're coming to the show Saturday night, right? Yeah. He'll be there. He's Good. performing a little bit before. That'll be fun. I will not be here Friday because it is our daughter's winter formal. So I'm going home Friday. So I'm going to miss your shenanigans, the your rascalness, right. your craziness, necessary roughness. I'm totally missing. I'm really bombed. But I got to go to the formal. How do we feel with the formal? How, how do we deal with dating with girls? Dating with girls in this era is interesting. I have, to, I have a lot of thoughts about it. Mm-hmm. I think me too um, scared young girls a lot. And I think I scared them a lot, mm-hmm. at least in LA, maybe not all over the US, but the girls that I watch that are friends with my girls are very, very cautious about dating. And I think that's really shitty. Mm -hmm. I think several people got hurt in the Me Too movement in legitimate ways, but that's not every person's experience in a relationship, in a heterosexual relationship. Mm -hmm. And what I watch with these girls, young girls, is a real hesitance to get involved. And that bums me out because I fucking love my husband and I love my relationship and I love dating in high school. I love dating in college. I loved it. And mm-hmm. I don't like that. So I ha- my girls haven't dated much and they are not unique in their communities. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't know. I don't yeah. really know completely what to say or to think about it. I think right. I'm still watching and trying to figure it out. That um, sounds like good news for us. Yeah, so, I mean, I, think, I feel like that's going to be a long Scared of dating. Yeah, scared of dating is, but that's 10 years from now. But scared of dating <laughs> is not healthy. <laughs> but that's yeah. not healthy. I know. Like, my that's six not year old, healthy. I think my six-year-old's <laughs> going through a crush, her first crush right now. Mm-hmm. And it's been like, a, it, literally in the last two weeks, we've had a lot of conversations about it. I don't know why I feel this way. Like, why does he make me feel this way? And I'm thinking, <laughs> me personally, I actually believe that I will handle the dating situation very well like I believe that Taylor is such a great mom mm-hmm. and she's going to be able to instill that sort of confidence and pride right uh, to where they'll handle themselves correctly but like just seeing the the question like the doubt the uncertainty like why do I feel this way I'm going to have a really hard time right seeing my daughter deal with like these bouts of anxiety when the heartbreaks happen and all that and they go through the emo phase listen to the new Blink-182 album you know with the mascara deep on the eyes like that's going to be we got that yeah, yeah oh yeah Isla's like all black makeup, all black clothes. She's mm-hmm. into like Slipknot and Slipknot. That's, that's old school shit. <laughs> that yeah, is old school. yeah. This is Slipknot. Big hot topic girl. No. Really? No, like black clothing and skeletons and super black eye makeup. Yeah, the uh, I'm talking about the uh, the clothing, the clothing. Yeah, store. no hot topic. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. She's not into that. No. 
Because that's like, that was where you would go get the, like the Slipknot no, and all that. No, she's like thrift store. Oh, only really? Only thrift store. Doesn't buy anything from anything but the slip thrift mm-hmm. store. But I think by the time your girls are up, this moment in time will be a little different, you know? Right. And they was... If you think about it, my girls were in middle school when Me Too was happening. Mm-hmm. So they are knew enough about this move, like about what was going on to be scared by it. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. All boys suddenly It'll be a are faint scary. Memory. Right. Yeah. And all boys are unsafe. And you have to be a certain type of boy to not be unsafe. So like I, I my high school boyfriend played football. Mm. My, my girls would be like, oh, too big, too scary, too, I don't know what's happening really? here. Yeah, and their dad is like that. Big, yeah. scary voice, mm-hmm. bo- you know, big guy. Yeah. Guy's guy. And I see them just observing them sometimes reacting to that type of physicality even and not knowing what to do with it, like mm-hmm. not knowing how to process it. Mm. And that really bums me out. Yeah. It's not fair to them and it's not fair to the boys. It's just not fair. Yeah. And I'm not saying that movement shouldn't have happened. I'm just saying I think that movement affected what I'm observing in my town in a certain way. And I don't like it. So I'm hoping that they just had some arrested development. Mm -hmm. And then that stuff starts kind of, they start kind of maturing into going, oh, okay. This was a moment where these things were brought into the forefront and that was necessary, but that's not everybody's experience. And that's not all boys, you know, Mm, Right. they mature into that. So bums me out. I loved my high school boyfriend. I thought he was just the best thing ever. You wish it would have been him. Not even sort of, <laughs> not even kind of, but at the moment it was yeah. really fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was yeah. a lot of fun to go to prom and that's your date. And that's not how it works now. They go as like a group. There's no, like the boy yeah, asked me out. I don't know out. about that. No. Yeah. You got to ask, you got to ask about That's out. not how it works where we live. Really? Mm-hmm. You need to move. It's not, you well, need to move so to I, a small my kids town. are, my kids graduating high school. I'm an empty nester in like six months. That is true. So it's too late to More move. reason to move. Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Because you know, last six yeah, months, yeah, in, yeah. It was Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. So, what are you doing the rest of the week here? Anything fun? We got. I mean, we still in our day. We still got. We got a Marshall Falk interview coming up, which will be incredible. Mm-hmm. And then we go to do Max Crosby's podcast after Marshall Falk. Wow. So we got a couple more back to back, and then we'll be gambling tonight. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Which I love. That's I don't awesome. know if you remember me talking about that earlier in the. Hall. I do. Yeah. I do. So it is. We it's a it's a full week. This is a, it's we a great do. week for us to kind like get after it and get ahead of the chain. Ten to twelve interviews. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. It's full schedule. I'm sure like the way you guys are grinding. I know Bird. He's out the. I haven't seen him. I tried it. He said he said he was going to come to Red Rock last night. Yeah, he said I'm going to go to dinner and I'll text you after. Yeah, I even texted him last night. No response. Mm. Saw he had. I, saw I texted he, him. Saw he had enough time. Tell Leanne, I'm so sorry. We're being we're late right now. And he said, no worries. Oh, no worries at all. Yeah. No, no, no. He sat in that chair forever we, and he goes, are you sure you don't need me in the podcast with you? Are you sure you don't want me to, are you sure you don't need me to hang around? I was like, dude, you can totally start it. <laughs> but yeah, at a certain funny. point, I'm kicking you out because yeah. if I don't kick you out, it'll be the three of you talking. It would have been funny And it's to my podcast, middle. right? Or yeah. just him talking. Yeah. He was going to sit in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to have him do, but. Uh, yeah, he didn't respond to me, but he did have enough time to tag me on his Instagram. So it's like. Well, you know, priorities. He says priorities. Yeah. Text me back. Are you coming to gamble with the boys or not? Come on. I know Tom, Tom's, uh, he loves the blackjack. We're going to get after it sometime, sometime this week. Yeah. Yes, I think tomorrow. When's Tom get in? Tomorrow. Tom gets in today, right? No, uh, Wednesday. Oh, that's right, tomorrow. Gonna blackjack tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Blackjack tomorrow, blackjack. tomorrow but I think he's going to do it at night at Red Rocks too. Have to, have to. Yeah. Good. That is gambling with Dana White is an absolute treat. It's, is it? It should be a bucket list for any yeah. human being that enjoys playing cards. Why? It's uh, terrifying. You, don't, um, hey, you come find out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's good terrifying. Job. Yeah, Listen, I'm new to gambling. Out. Remember, I just learned yeah. how to play craps like two months come ago. Come find out. I know. But uh, yeah. Well, yeah, come find out. It is lots of fun. I bet it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's the only way I'm going to find out. It's well, crazy. thank you for coming. Absolutely. Thank you for doing my Absolutely. podcast. When Victoria told me you would, I was like, are you serious? I can't, I couldn't even believe that you would. I don't, I don't even would. think we so thought about thank it. thank you. Yeah, they're like, was, yeah. Would you go on Leanne's podcast? We're like, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, she's a queen. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I will absolutely do that. I don't know about that, but yeah. thank you very much. Thank yeah. you for having us. Thank you, for thank you Will. Us. Thank you very yes. much. Seriously, I enjoyed the conversation so much. I can't wait to we meet your wives. I know. Some we'll point. Be the best. Know. Will they be at the Bear we'll Olympics? We'll show them off at some point. Uh, if they're not pregnant. 
<laughs> yeah, for, yeah. Why they can't go to the beer Olympics when they're pregnant? I don't know. I, I, my, my my sweet lady likes to nest. She likes to start nesting. Once the inception happens, nest. You know? Yeah, it's <laughs> more like, hey, do you want to go? And if you feel like it's no, it's more like, oh, look, you you don't have to go. Right. It's gonna be fun no matter what. Yeah. I would love you to enjoy the fun. Yeah. 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 Totally. For sure. Mm. Well, hopefully, I'll meet him sometime soon. You Absolutely. Will. All right. Have fun in Vegas, y'all. Yeah, All right. You, you as well. See have Saturday. fun at the formal. Oh, oh well. yeah. Well, I'm not going. I'm just going to get the ready to be the ride. To get the photos. To be the ride home. Right. Yeah. I'm just Uber. And, you know, it's her senior year. I didn't want to yeah, not you got, go. You have to be there. That's that's yeah. awesome. You know? Shame on And shame on Bert. Right. Yeah. Let's just shame on Bert. Shame on Bert. For not being well, there. Well, in his defense, it was supposed to be last week. And no defense. No, 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 no defense. Like, Shit. Shame, Shame on Bert. On Bert. Shame yes. on Bert for not being here. <laughs> right. For uh, not texting the boys back last night. Right. He has a lot of lot yeah. to be ashamed of. For the winter formal. A lot. All of it. Yeah. yeah. His rascal is we, not. We love you, Bert. Yeah. He's not being very rascally. We're mad not at you, being Bert. very rascally. <laughs> thank, thank you guys. Thank it. you. No worries.